Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Summer Series Get Organized Challenge and challenge number four, a plethora of pictures. Um, and I know I already read this little post, but um, for purposes of recording it, I thought it was adorable. Um, from Melissa, glad to be here, looking to get perfect attendance even if I do not get organized. Laugh out loud. Also, at least I can say I finished something. Way to go, Melissa. We're glad that you're with us. Glad to see all of your names popping up here on the attendee list. Um, also, Connie asks real quickly, are other challenges available for viewing? And absolutely they are. They're posted on the website. I just put a post up this morning on our Facebook page with a link to them. And I've also figured out a way to post the PDFs up there. Um, not that I don't love sharing the PDFs with everyone, but we got literally hundreds of requests last week that sort of bogged us down for a little bit. So if you were one of those requesters, I think we got everything uh, updated this morning. But the PDFs will be posted on the website now on the same page as everything else. So. Um, and if you just go to our home page and click into the site, we put a button up now on the upper left column that says um, Summer Series Get Organized Challenge. If you click on that, you're going to find all the webinars, the PDFs, and the workbook all there. So um, with that said, I am going to um, get started with challenge number four, a plethora of pictures. Um, I know I can't see you all raise your hands, but as you know, I teach this class or, or a modified mini version of it all over the country, and I say, raise your hand if you don't have enough pictures. And thanks to the joys of, uh, we had one hand go up. So, but most people are sort of inundated with pictures. They get them their own pictures. Family and friends tend to pass pictures on because you, um, they know that you're a scrapbooker. So. Um, <coughs> You end up with more pictures. And then, of course, the whole phenomenon of digital photography really encourages us to take pictures of things we would have never um, spent the time or money for film and developing and flash and all that stuff before. So um, let's get going. Um, I'll do the same uh, little reminder I do at every class. If you think of a question as we're going through the webinar, please feel free to type that question into your little question box. Um, it may get answered through the process of the uh, presentation this morning, but um, just in case I don't answer it, you'll, you'll, it'll be up there on the question board and we'll answer it at the end. Um, there was one other thing I always say, now I can't remember what it is, but I'm sure it'll pop into my head. All right, so let's get started here. My computer is running a little bit slow as I click screens. First of all, this week's winner, uh, Kathleen Van Eck Adamson. Um, just joined the challenge. I can't read my whole screen. I know you guys get to see my whole screen, but I, I can't see it because there we go. Um, I've been working this direction for a while. I sorted my paper a few months ago. I sorted through one of my sticker binders, and we'll do another tonight. I'm amazed at how hard it is to purge some stupid little sticker page papers with only a tiny, tiny little remaining fragment on it. And I know purge comes up for everybody as sort of a challenge, or not everybody, but most of us have a hard time getting rid of those things. So hopefully just listening to the chatter on Facebook and, and seeing how people kind of strategize mentally how to get rid of things and purge things will really help you with that. But it is difficult. It's probably one of the hardest things about getting organized. So Kathleen, you've won either a little gift pack from our sister site, Martha's Choice, or a $25 gift certificate to use on the Scrap Rack site. So um, I will email you, or you can email me first if you get there first, and we'll get your gift certificate code if that's what you want, or your address if you want us to send you out the little prize pack from Martha's Choice. So let's get going. Um, Webinar series changes, but this messed me up because this wasn't what I was expecting here. We have added two more webinars to the series. So we'll have a break the week of the 23rd of August. Um, I'm not sure I'll have an internet connection because I'm going camping with my kids. Lots of times I do have a connection, but I, I don't know that I will this time. So we're going to take a little break, a week off. I was trying, I know I've said before, to get all eight classes into six, but I just don't think it's going to work. Um, I just think it's too much and it's going to defeat the purpose of kind of working through things a little bit at a time. So I bumped it up to eight classes and you all probably got an email saying, hey, there's been two or with a new schedule on it. You might not have really understood why you were getting the email, but it's just to let you know there's two more classes. We do have that break on the 23rd, however. Um, so thanks for sticking with me on that. 
All right, so our webinar goal today is to have a strong system for sorting, storing, and organizing both digital and printed photographs. So, um, and I know you guys are probably tired of hearing me say this, but really one of the keys to this whole organization thing is a mental path for your brain to follow, you know, to be able to know exactly where things are so that you can take them out and put them away quickly and easily. And this is no different with digital um, and printed photos. So we're going to really work forward on in terms of a, um, of a system, a mental system as well. So and then understand how to tag digital photos. Um, and we're going to talk quite a bit about that towards the end of the seminar or the webinar. So what will you need? You'll need some sort of software for storing and sorting your digital images. Most of you already have that already. You'll need photo storage boxes of some type for printed photos, a perpetual calendar, either physical or on your computer, and paper or sticky notes for labeling. And we'll get through that, all of those things as well. So pretty basic list, things that most of you probably already have at hand. Step one for photos this is the same as step one for everything else. You've got to gather all that stuff together. So your first step is going to bring all those printed photographs together in one place, one physical place. And um, this to do the same thing with your digital photos. Get them all together in one area of your computer. Um, so Microsoft Office Picture Manager, most of us already have that on our computers. It's a really easy system to use for organization, uh, for sorting and storing photos. Um, you just have to check your, if you use Microsoft Office, it's part of the Office suite. Your computer may already be using it. You don't even know it. And then Picasa is very helpful, too. One of the nice things about Picasa is when you first, it's free, but when you first load it onto your computer, it will literally go out and find all the images that are scattered around on your computer and bring them into Picasa um, in chronological order. So if you're not even sure where your pictures are, that's a good way to, to actually locate them on your computer. So here we've got two kinds of piles of pictures. Some of us have our pictures poured into a drawer and they're just kind of a mess and some of us have them all stacked up or somewhere in between but you want to pull all those pictures together. We're going to start with physical photos first and so step two is to label each of the boxes of photos you've already got. And those labels should be include to and from dates, whether they're sorted, or whether they need to be sorted and if they're not even date uh, organized by date then just a label on there that says need to be sorted. So let's take a look at how that might so here are a couple of different photo storage boxes um, that are just clearly labeled. Photos made um, to, to, July 4, to July 2004, they need to be sorted. So what that label is telling me is that they are photos from those dates, but they're not in any sort of order inside that box. The box below that's labeled sorted, photos June 2001 to April 2002, and it's labeled sorted, those are actually in order already in the box. And then we've got a couple of boxes over here that are chock full of stuff that just need to be sorted. There's no rhyme or reason to what's in there. So that's your very first step, kind of getting that major group of photos together. And then very much like we've done with the, um, with the everything else, we're going to make sorting guides. And you can either use boxes or sheets of paper to do this. You know, the one thing that I didn't check today, and I'm hoping my indicator is showing that my voice is coming through loud and clear. Um, if, if you can't, if I'm not coming through loud and clear, can you raise your hand and I will try to adjust my microphone? It looks like we're doing okay today. I'm not wobbling. I'm not bobbleheading today, so you can hear me perfect. Okay, so you're going to choose either boxes or sheets of paper to use yours for sorting. You're going to note dates and major events on the sorting guides. And you're going to use uh, sticky notes work great and can be transferred to the photos once the sorting is done. So let's see what that's going to look like in, in more detail. So here are just some sorting guides. These <laughs> look kind of funky. They look like they might be yellow um, 11 by 14 paper, but they're actually, it's just the camera angle. It's actually just 8.5 by 11 paper. And you can see I put major information on these sorting guides. So the one that says 2009 has a little indicator there, SB. And SB in my world stands for spring break. So I always code everything that's a spring break photo with the initials SB. 
that I, it's easy for me to find later. We're going to talk about that, uh, especially with digital. And so this was spring break in Moab, Utah in 2009. And then you can see at the bottom, it says LT has the number 13 circled 7 and 8. And so what that means is London Thomas, my oldest child, was thir turned 13 in 2009. And he ended the 7th grade and started the 8th grade. And those are just on there so that I don't have to count in my head as I'm coming across pictures. And I go, oh, that's London at his 13th birthday, or Max at his 11th birthday, or that's Max at fifth grade graduation, or whatever. I have those little cheat notes down at the bottom, so it's easy for me to sort those things out. So major things that happen in your life, if you label your little sorting templates kind of consistently to make it easy, it does make it easy to make those determinations and at least get if not get right on the mark for what year or event it was to get pretty darn close. So um, obviously, then I just put some other you know kids' ages and grades, vacations, so major vacations, weddings, any big event that happened that year that you might have photos for. If you go ahead and jot it down, when you come across those photos, it'll be easy to, rem to put them in the right pile. Um, so you're going to start with a year, and as you sort these pictures, don't worry about groups of pictures from particular events unless they're already together. Just get everything into the right year pile. Now here's another nice thing. This is probably one of the only times in this whole organization process that you can um, recruit your family members to help you with this. This is a completely subjective exercise. So. Um, it's a great way to substitute out your family game night on Wednesday night for family photo sorting night. And um, not only will it be fun and you'll get more done, but you'll really get a lot of insight into the memories of your family members. I, I know it's always kind of amazing when I talk with my sister or my brother about things we did as kids and how everybody's uh, recollection of that event is just a little bit different. So. Um, so this is a good time to recruit them to help you, a good family evening here. So here's a couple of different um, options. There's the, in the upper left-hand corner, if you're using photo storage boxes, what I've done in the photo storage box is, again, put sticky notes with the major events. Uh, 2010, July, Lake Chelan. 2010, June was eighth grade graduation for London. Uh, 2010, Max was, uh, six, he was 12 years old and in the sixth grade. So I put those notes up on the box. I know what to throw in the box. And then I'm going to transfer those notes over to the photographs um, when I'm ready to sort them into more detail. And then you can see also see the pile of pictures on the yellow there um, where I've just sorted them all by year. And they're just kind of stacked up on that picture. So step five, sort stacks into events. So sort each year stack by event, Christmas, Easter, birthday, et cetera. That's your second step in the process. You're going to create folders for each event you're going to scrap about. Just because you have pictures for an event and you know what year it took place, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to scrap about it. Um, I know some of us get bogged down and we have these pictures, so we have to turn them into scrapbook pages. Um, but give yourself permission to choose the most important things to scrap about um, and then and, and the other stuff can go on the back burner. So when you get caught up, then you can go back and actually do those things. So um, to choose the number of layouts and note it on the folder. So one of the keys to being successful with photo sorting is choosing the things that are, are best suited for your scrapbooks and choosing the number of pictures that you're the number of layouts that you're actually going to do. So. Um, for me, I choose six pictures for each 12 by 12 layout I'm going to do. So if I was sorting pictures for Disney, I would say to myself, okay, I'm going to do four 12 by 12 layouts. That means I get to choose the best 24 Disney pictures to go on those layouts. And you'll find that it really makes it easier at this part of the process to sort those really great pictures and separate the other ones out so that when you're ready to scrap, they're actually ready to go. So put the photos you will use into the folder and put the remaining photos into, into the picture box. You can use sticky notes to tag them. So essentially what we're creating is one set of pictures that we've decided we're going to scrapbook and one set of pictures that um, we aren't going to throw away or we're not ready to throw away or we don't want to throw away um, that's just going to now be moved into chronological order. 
um, and labeled in a photo storage box. So it's really important that um, you're, you're ready to do that, to put those pictures into two separate boxes um, and with the sticky notes to put the chronological ones together. And then the folders are your scrapbook, scrapbooking pictures. Put the photos in the pink folder into a box labeled photos to scrap. Include notes about where the memorabilia is stored. Include journaling, journaling notes in bullet or bullet points if you need to. So um, here's an example of how what I'm talking about there, which is when you sort your pictures into events, you're going to choose the number of images. So you see this 2008 Hawaii spring. I'm going to do six pages. That equals um, 36 photos for that particular layout. Um, this is the place where you would also put any other sort of notes. Um, it also says put the remaining photos into the garbage can if you can or into a labeled box by year or date if you cannot. So I will tell you, once I sorted my pictures this way and I had my pictures that were ready to scrap and I had the rest of the pictures that I had organized chronologically with little sticky notes separating sort of each major date or event, I was able to take those boxes over to my mother-in-law's house and say, here, you can choose anything you want out of here. And she went through them um, very carefully, maintaining the integrity of the sorting. And she chose out what she wanted. And I took them to my mother, and she chose what she wanted. And I gave, some to my, I gave the same thing to my sister. She chose what she wanted. But it was really a great way to share those pictures with family. And then they came back to me, and I was able to, in good conscience, know that I could throw them away if I wasn't going to scrap them because everybody who wanted pictures had them. I know some people cannot throw away pictures. So I'm going to say when, when you're ready to store those pictures, those boxes of um, just chronological pictures need to be kept somewhere out of sight, out of mind, but easy to access so when you add to them, you can still do it. One of the problems that you come across and I just read a post on Facebook about this. It was about um, materials, but it applies to pictures as well, that when you're working on something and then all of a sudden you find some other thing, in this case another stack of pictures, you get distracted from the task at hand by, and you start looking through those pictures and then you're off onto another tangent instead of staying focused on what you're working on. So if you can put the pictures that you're not using away somewhere so that you're not tempted to constantly dig into those boxes, you're going to be a lot more productive when you are ready to work. So here's just some more added information about that Hawaii trip where we stayed, the big things that we did, uh, journaling notes, they're located in the computer journal under March 28, 2008, and the memorabilia is in the file cabinet under March 08. So just by putting a few notes on that piece of paper that you're going to fold your pictures into, so this is just an uh, eight and a half by 11 piece of paper folded in half, and I'm going to put the pictures inside it, fold it around the pictures, and drop it in my um, box of organized photos. Now when I'm ready to scrap those pictures, I'm going to be able to pull them all out at one time, and also I'm going to have notes that direct me to where the journaling notes are on the computer, where the memorabilia would be. So it'll be real easy for me to pull everything together at one time and actually work on that project. Put the sorted photos into a box labeled ready to scrap. So here's my ready to scrap box, 2008 to 2009. You can see the little pink paper sticking down the bottom. So everything that happened that I'm going to scrap about over the course of those two years is in this box. And I can go into the box knowing I'm going to scrap Hawaii, open the box, and just pull out that set of pictures without getting distracted by the Easter pictures, the Christmas pictures, birthday pictures, whatever, because I have just that whole little packet um, completed and ready to go for scrapbooking. Especially if I'm headed off to a crop or something, I can just grab that packet, packet of pictures, grab my travel materials or vacation materials, however I have those sorted, and now I'm out the door with everything I need to actually create wonderful pages. And it's just taken me a few minutes to get everything together. Digital is a little bit more challenging because of just by virtue of the number of pictures so um, the most important step in digital photo storage is downloading your pictures into the right folder the first time. Um, and I don't know about you, but for me, it, there's been a number of times when I sit down and download pictures and I get distracted and I just hit yes without looking where, what folder those are loading into. I know I loaded my kids' Halloween pictures into the dog's vet record photo file at one point. And then luckily, when I did Picasa, I thought those pictures were gone. I couldn't find them anywhere. When I did Picasa, the pictures popped back up again, and I was able to put them in the right place. So another benefit to Picasa there. 
So when you set up your computer, when you're gathering your photos together all in one place, th these are my recommendations, that the first thing you do is set up a My Photos folder. And when you open that folder, you have just year folders. And when you open each year folder, you have event folders. So you can see the ones in red um, are all the same. Labeling things consistently is really, really important. So you don't want to call Christmas 2008 Christmas and Christmas 2009 Xmas and Christmas 2010 December 25th. Um, if you label things consistently, we're going to talk a little bit about, about tagging and sorting, your computer is going to find the things you need quickly and easily. So try to stay consistent with the different things. So, um, so July 4th, I didn't have a July 4th file in 2009, but I did go to Lake Chelan in 2009, so that's just labeled Chelan. And then, of course, in 2010, LT birthday, which is London Thomas's birthday, which every full every year would actually have that folder as well. But for this example, they did not. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Digital photo storage, tagging your photos. Again, before you get started, you want to choose the number of pictures that you're going to use for each um, event. So let's go back to Disney. If all my Disney pictures were digital, when I um, opened my 2008 folder, I would find the 2008 Disney folder. When I opened that folder, I would find the pictures I'd chosen. Um, and then I would find another folder that's labeled Disney Just OK. Um, so if you can't delete pictures, and really strongly, 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 I recommend deleting pictures. And I know I get a lot of feedback on that, saying, why should I delete them? You know, that way I'll always have them. I, um, it doesn't cost anything except some space on my hard drive. Well, um, but really, one of the things it costs you, it's like everything else. It's like purging any of your supplies. If you constantly have to, if you take 1,000 pictures at Disney, but you're only going to scrapbook 36 of them, when you go into that Disney folder, I, I promise you you're going to get sucked into looking at all of those pictures. Pretty soon an hour or maybe two hours are going to have gone by, um, and you haven't gotten anything done. Except, I mean, you've had a good time to sort of relive those memories. I'm not... I'm not saying there's not some value there, but if your goal is to scrapbook, you're going to lose your scrapbooking time getting sucked into those photos. Now, in order to prevent that, if you can't delete, all you need to do is open a, a, put another folder in that file and label it just OK. And as you're sorting the pictures, as you're choosing your 36 pictures, any picture that you know isn't going to be one of those chosen few is just going to get moved over into that just OK folder. So when you're all done, you're going to have your Disney pictures, and they're going to be, and then you're going to have a whole file folder for most of us, just OK. Or some of us might have a file that's called delete and move all those pictures into the delete folder and then hit the delete button and delete them all at once, which is a little bit faster and easier than deleting them one at a time as well. Um, and I suppose you could also have two, you could have two folders, a just OK and a delete, because we know there's pictures that get taken that are blurry or the subject's wrong or whatever. So you don't have to click and delete pictures individually. Move them into that delete folder. And then when you're all done sorting, delete the whole folder. OK. So as far as tagging goes, I go round and round with friends about tagging. And I have friends who tag every single picture individually. And that's totally not necessary. It's a huge time sucker. So the best way to tag your, your photos is to um, High, is to tag them all at once with the date and the event. So if you just um, you know hi highlight all your pictures, right click and rename. Um, and so if you rename them to be the date and then the event um, and then save them, they're all going to have that name and event. And then all you need to do um, to get more specific is to go into pictures. Like if I had a picture with London but nobody else in it, or London and Goofy. Then I would go in and just tag that picture, London and Goofy. I would tag a picture of Max with Cinderella. Don't tell him I said that. He won't like that. I put him Cinderella. He would never stand by Cinderella. But, um, <laughs> but um, I, and so if you just tag a few pictures with the things that you want to look for, the, the, uh, the Cinderella's castle or Snow White's castle, um, the train, Pirates of the Caribbean. You just need one tag to get you to that group of pictures. You don't have to tag every picture in the group. When you go into the search box of your computer, you can type in 
Disney, comma, pirates, and you're going to get that pirates picture that you tag, and it's going to direct you back to this Disney folder in the right year so you can find it quickly and easily. I know tagging is a little bit um, cumbersome for a lot of people, um, but once you start using it and it gets simpler, but the, men the mental part of it is cumbersome. So it, you can use a perpetual calendar to aid your memory, and I'm going to show you uh, some pictures of that and how, what that means. Be consistent. You know, use the date with the year, the month, and the day, and that'll keep your computer organizing things in the right, in, you know, correctly. If you add dots or dashes or put the month and the date ahead of the year, sometimes but not always, your computer sorts things differently. So try and stay consistent. So it should be the date, the main subject, and then the event or the people. You want to keep your keystrokes to a minimum. So coming up with codes that's again going to refer back to the perpetual calendar is helpful. So anything that's London, my son London, is labeled LT. And Max's name is Maxfield, but of course I just use Max. And so anything that you can shorten up, like I said, SB always means spring break. If I'm looking for spring break pictures the entire, for the entire lives of my children or since I've been digital scrapbooking, and I go into my search box and I type in SB, it's going to pull up every picture from spring break that I've ever taken. So if I wanted to do a compilation of spring break for 10 years, I would have all those pictures at one time. If I wanted to do spring break Moab, I could just do SB, comma, Moab, and it'll bring up all the pictures that are labeled spring break and Moab. So stay consistent with those things. Choose a code for Christmas and Easter and Valentine's Day and all the things that happen regularly. And then when you go to look for them, you don't have to actually go photos, year, you know, and look for the folder. You just go to that search box and type in SB Moab, and it'll take you right there. So you don't have to open folder after folder going through one at a time. Uh, and then I already talked about don't do all of the pictures not necessary. Finally, be realistic. Um, not every group of photos needs to be sorted and organized. Worry about the things that are most important to you. So even if you have to digitally have sort of a dumping ground of photos 2008, um, the, um, the same way that we have a sort of a dumping ground of those boxes of just okay pictures we're not going to use, that you move your pictures into, just do that. Um, you know, really we take so many digital photos. They're not every event isn't going to make it into a scrapbook. So try to focus on the things that you are going to use and that, and that you know you will use first or prioritize those things. So let's look at a perpetual calendar. For those of you who have never used a perpetual calendar, all it is is a page per month. And you can see in the picture on the um, right side, there's a, that one's from um, the Retro Tula perpetual calendar is from Close to My Heart. Um, every, you know, you can buy them at Hallmark and those kind of places too. Some places call it a birthday calendar. But the goal of it is is that you write on the lines um, people's birthdays or big events and then you can keep it forever because it doesn't have the days of the week. It's just by the day of the month. So uh, hence the term perpetual calendar. So you can actually get one and hang it on the uh, bulletin board by your desk, which is what um, I prefer to do because it's vis visible and accessible. But you can also create one in Excel in your computer. And so this one on the left side is just perpetual calendar in Excel. And so you can see at the top, I have what the holidays are listed as, um, what their codes are. Um, and then through, then through the pink, those are people. So uh, in April 13th, it says Tisa. And then I put a little note in there, Teresa Banks. So my sister's name is Teresa. We call her Tisa. Her birthday is April 13th. So anything that I code with for her, any picture that she's in, I use the word Tisa. Um, and so different, that's just so how I remember each, um, each different event. If you look at Christmas, I have XM um, E for Christmas Eve and then Xmas just for Christmas. So just giving yourself some codes that you can easily refer to so that you're consistently labeling the same way with every picture or every set of pictures. Halloween is HW. So it doesn't matter what year it is. Um, if I code it HW and I sort in my, go in my search box and type in HW, I'm going to get all the Halloween pictures. This week's challenge is to establish your physical and computer filing system. So that might mean 
downloading Picasso or buying a photo storage system that you've been thinking about and wanting, uh, or using Microsoft Office Picture Manager on your computer, um, and then and then also pay, uh, photo storage boxes. How many will you need? The photo storage boxes that I use are a Sterilite 16 quart container. I'm sorry, that's not on here anywhere. Um, they work great because they're a little bit wider than um, than that eight and a half by eleven piece of paper. So it makes it really easy to just fold a piece of paper in half and line those up. Um, so the ones in the pictures that I showed, that's what they are. I usually get some requests for that afterwards. It's just a Sterilite 16 quart shoebox size container. They're from Target. I'm sure they have them at Walmart and everywhere else as well. Um, so your goal is then to sort two boxes, piles, drawers, however you have those things stored, of photos. Add one additional box for each family helper you recruit. And like I said, if you can make this a family evening, um, it really is a lot of fun. Um, and you'll get a lot of information as well in terms of journaling. And you can just jot down little journaling notes or particular memories that your kids or family have and fold it right up with those pictures so that you remember it when you're doing the pictures. Now, I know a lot of us don't rock at journaling. We're not good at actually writing down that story. But one of the advantages you'll find to grouping your pictures this way is that you have those little notes of dates and who's in the pictures. So at the very least, when you're done with that layout or, or before you start the layout, you have your background paper picked out. On the back side of that background paper, just transfer that information over. So 100 years from now, if you haven't done your journaling, when someone pulls that out of your scrapbook, They'll be able to look at the back and at least know who's in the picture, what it was, and all that kind of stuff. If you're mostly digital, you're going to sort one year of digital photos as well. And then we're going to add to what we've been doing over the last few weeks. You're going to sort one container of other supplies into your four-section system. And hallelujah, there have been several people who've posted on the um, Facebook group that they're done with um, their container sorting, with their embellishments and their stickers and all that stuff. Now. I don't know if those are people who just got the assignment last week and just really powered through, or if they're people who've been part of the, ch the webinar series you know, since the beginning of the year, and they've slowly they've worked through and actually accomplished that goal. But congratulations to all of you. Um, then you're going to sort four inches of paper, and you're going to post on Facebook or email me. I know some of you aren't Facebook um, friendly, so if you just send me an email that says, I got my challenge done, or I'm working on my challenge. Just something to hold yourself accountable. You don't have to be complete before you email me. You just have to be working forward. Um, and then we'll get you into that prize drawing as well. So um, let's go ahead. Now I'm going to open up the floor for questions. Um, let me make my question pane bigger. Whoops bigger here so I can actually read the question. So if you have questions, go ahead and post up now, and we will work through the list here as we go along. Um, let's go back to the top. Uh, does the, OK, so for those of you who maybe jumped in right after the start, yes. I added that um, the PDFs for, this, for number two and number three to that page. So again, you can get to the summer series webinar page now from our website. So you just click into the website. And in the upper left corner, there's a, the top button now says summer series get organized challenge or something very similar. Click on that button, and you will see the, um, the previous um, webinar videos. And you will also see a new link that says click here to download the PDF. So you can get those PDFs from there. Two and three are there. PDF number one is too big for our hosting site. So if you still need PDF number one, the get, get ready to get organized, you'll have to email me and request that. But the other two are up, and I will also put this as well. Um, would red letters go into letters number section or in the rainbow with red paper? Is rainbow category just for paper? Red uh, letters are going to go in the letters and numbers section. So remember that letters and numbers section is all your alphabets, numbers, and punctuation marks that are not theme specific. And the reason we don't put alphabets in with the rainbow is this example of just all red letters. Sort of your common sense brain would say, hey, that should just go in rainbow. But the reason we don't do that is because once you use some of those letter stickers up, then you don't know what else they might work with. 
or um, what else you might, like if you're not thinking red for alphabet, um, you might not look that you want to spell something out in black, and then you go to black and you don't have the letters to spell it out. Well, if all the letters were together in alphanumeric, you would see what you had left in black, and you would also go, hey, I also have red in the same style. I could mix those together. I'm working on Disney. Now I can spell the words because I have all the letters that I need. And it also works really great for those of us who do a lot of sort of collage letters where we use great big chipboard letters and then sticker letters and then write in a letter or cut out a letter or rub on a letter for that collage look. So you want to keep all your alphanumeric together um, as long as they're not theme specific. Um, I do have a question about acrylic and unmounted rubber stamps. I have them mounted on special three ring punch pages and they have been in a three ring binders but not in four sections and some of the cling is not clingy. I would like to move the ones I am keeping into the scrap rack. What would you suggest? I know you will talk about stamps another time but I like to work ahead as my time allows. So um, yeah, I'll just give you kind of a quick rundown on that and all you need to do um, is take those stamps and you can put them right into the section they belong in, right? So let's say if you have a Christmas stamp, a Santa stamp, that's obviously Christmas. That's the only place you're going to use it. But let's say you have um, a stamp that's a beach ball. And a beach ball stamp is obviously going to work in beach, but it might also work in baby, and it might also work in sports, right? Depending on how you color in that beach ball. So in that situation, you want to give each stamp a number. Um, so if you're, and there's, there's actually, this is really cumbersome, Eileen, I, I, I guess I probably don't have time to go into it, but what I'm going to direct you to is the article, go to our website, from the top menu bar, choose watch and learn, and there's an article in there about creating stamp catalogs and cataloging your stamps and punches, and that's really what I'm going to talk about in that next series um, in the webinar with that, where we talk about stamps and punches. So if you want to get ahead of the game, go ahead and read that article and it will take you through whether you have a few stamps or whether you have a lot of stamps, how to actually um, process those. Can you send us the website address? So Eileen, I'm sorry I'm not giving you all the information you need, but it is on the website. I just don't want to burden everybody else who, with a long tirade about how to do that, but it's all there. Our website is just www.thescraprack.com. Um, uh, and when you get there, the opening page is just a page with like a collage of pictures. Just click anywhere on that page and it'll actually take you into the website. Um, Kathleen says, wow, well, I'm excited. I'm excited that you're here, Kathleen. I'm excited that you all are, are participating in this. Um, and, and so uh, and you have some um, comments here too from other people. You're not alone on the purge thing, Kathleen. It really is one of the hardest things. Um, one of the hardest things to do is, is purge. Um, from Jean Thornton, really psyched up about having met you at the Valley Forge CKC convention last week. Still on cloud nine hearing your seminar in person. You know, I had a great time. It was so nice to meet you too. You know, as I travel around, of course I see your little pictures, everybody's little face on Facebook or whatever, but it's really different to meet people in person. And, um, even though I don't post where everybody posts on Facebook, I really try to read Facebook and kind of stay in touch with you know, what you guys are doing well, what you're struggling with, where I gave good information, or maybe I need to improve the way I'm delivering information. And so it's really great. If you ever at a show or convention that we're at, I really hope you'll take the time to come by and say hi. Um, so it's so great to meet people. And then says, loved having the opportunity to show off my travel pack and its usefulness. Uh, at each of the six classes I attended. Thank you for that. I don't know why everyone doesn't own a scrap rack system. <laughs> well, thank you so much um, for sharing that. Um, from Francie, please remember to sit still and keep your voice level. No pressure. <laughs> uh, there's my, my little warnings. Don't bobble. Thanks, you guys. Your audio is fading in and out again. All right, I'm trying not to bobble. Uh, Great two more rewards. Oh, that's a great way to look at it, Diane. Since I've added two more classes, she's adding two more rewards, as you all so, should. Um, uh, Anne McCullough says, I prepared two more challenge rewards numbers already, just in case. Way to go, Anne. Um, 
Can you provide us your Facebook page? I don't know why it's so hard to find me on Facebook, but if you just look under the scrap rack, or um, you can also search under uh, customer service. I'm, I'm typing these in as I'm saying this, and I'll send it up at the scrap rack dot com. Um, I'm send to all. Um, and, and you should be able to find us that way. Um, if you can't, for some, I don't know why it's so hard, but I have had a lot of different people say, I can't find you on Facebook. And I have other people that say, no problem finding you on Facebook. So if you can't find it, email me, and I'll, I'll try and get you out a link. Also, there's a link on the website. So if you go into that Summer Series Get Organized Challenge and scroll down to the bottom, um, there's a link for Facebook, and there's also a link for the workbook. I have photo albums that belong to my grandmother and my mother. The pages are black and falling out of the book. What is the best way to take the pictures off these pages and remount on acid-free paper after making copies to do pages for my children? Thanks for this wonderful series, Betty. Um, you know, Betty, I think probably the best choice is going to be a product like Undo. Um, and I'm, I'm going to spell U-N-D-U. And it... Um, is designed to remove stickers and photographs and all those kind of things in the scrapbooking world. I haven't particularly used it on archival, I mean, on, on you know, antique stuff. Um, I'm sure if you read the label or visit their website, if anybody else knows of a good product, you can post that in the questions. And as I get down to the bottom, I'll post that as well. But Undo is really an incredible product. If you've never used it, um, if you've never used it, then um, you'll love it. It's definitely worth the investment. You can literally take a sticker or something sticky off a page layout, um, turn it upside down um, on the table, and once the undo dries, the sticker is sticky again, so you can reapply it. So it's really a cool product. Um, so I'm getting mixed reviews on my sound here. Uh, let's see. Now, I love the idea for family night. And it's so fun. Even my kids, I have boys, and they're not usually into that stuff. Even they had a great time doing it. How do you view the past uh, uh, webcast that I've missed? You just have to visit our website, um, click into the website, and then click on that box that says Summer Series Challenge. Um, I was bobbling for a few minutes there, so... Uh, is there any reason you don't store the memorabilia with the photos you're going to scrap? Um, no, you absolutely can store the photos um, and the memorabilia together, especially if you're using a holding album type um, method. I guess I could incorporate that into this. I think we talk about holding album actually when we talk about going to a crop. But yeah, if you have your photos and, and you can store them together, there's actually an article on the website, Glenda, for you know, creating a holding album, I can send, if you can't find it, it should be on that Watch and Learn page, but if you can't find it, email me and I'll send you a link to it, but, um, it's, you know, especially if you're using a scrap rack system, you know, those big 12 by 12 pockets are a great place to put memorabilia, and then the perfect six pages are great places to store your pictures, and you can actually store six or eight pictures in a pocket, so each layout, each page, 12 by 12 layout has its own pocket of pictures, with the memorabilia, so maybe I'll incorporate that into this um, into this webinar in the next series of webinars, the holding album. Because yes, if you have it all together and you can store it all together, you have big enough um, pockets or whatever to put it in, and that's a perfect way to do it. Where do you get Picasa? Um, Picasa you can download online. It's just Picasa.com. It's free. Uh, it used to be Picasa.net, and then I think they bought both websites. It's owned by Yahoo or Google or something, somebody, so it's their like free photo storage. So it's you've got it spelled correctly there, P-I-C-A-S-A, -A, and it's either .com or .net. Yay, this is how I already sort my digital photos by year. This is great news and a sigh of relief. So Robin is a little bit ahead of the rest of us for this week's challenge. Um, what do you mean by perpetual calendar? Is it those codes you use? Perpetual calendar is actually the physical calendar. So you can either be a spreadsheet, a grid type calendar, or it can be the actual physical calendars that are sold, like through Close to My Heart or, um, or at the Hallmark store. And it's just you know the physical paper that you write on 
that says this is January and all your birthdays or special events in January are listed on that calendar. Um, all my digital photos are on iPhoto. Does anyone know how to use or have a great way to do this iPhoto program to sort pictures? Uh, Janice, please post that question on the Facebook page. I don't use a Mac. I'm a PC. but. Um, I know there are lots of Mac users who love iPhoto and totally understand how to use it. So they'll be able to give you some great tips. Um, okay, whoever is done can come and help me. <laughs> Tammy will take anybody's help if you're finished with your sorting. Susan says, I have 30 years of unorganized photos. Is there any hope? There absolutely is. But just like everything else, start small and, it w and have that system. So, um, you know, if you, you, if you have 30 years of unorganized photos, you know you're going to need one box for every five years. Get your six photo boxes. Get them organized. And as you get them labeled, I mean, and as you come across photos or you're working on photo storage, you can just throw them into the year box. But don't, like everything else, work in small piles of stuff so you see the results and you can use the benefits of the things that you've sorted. Um, and, and really, it's having that mental system that's going to save you because you always know where it goes. So just don't get crazy. Don't try to do too much. Remember our posting from last week, the winner from last week, how she said she tried to get too many things going at the same time and it all kind of came crashing down. Can you add the PDF for number one webinar as well? I can't add it because our, web, our, P, our server will only hold two megs. But just email me and I will send it to you. So, or cus email customer service. I'm going to type that out for everybody. Customer service. Oh, if I spell service right, that'll help. Customer service at the scrap rack dot com. And put a PDF number one. Oops, I put an exclamation. Number one in the subject line. Um, you don't have to include anything in the body of the email. We're, we're going to see it in the subject line. We're just going to respond, attach, and send it back right back out to you. You were fading it when you talked about how to get in the prize drawing. Can you repeat? Um, absolutely. Anybody who posts on Facebook automatically gets entered in the prize drawing. So just by posting up on Facebook, um, how you're doing, what you're, how you're progressing, whether you post a picture or not, it's, it's fun for everybody to see and kind of helpful and reassuring to yourself. So once you post on Facebook, that's not replying, that's actually posting that you're moving forward. Um, you don't have to complete the challenge to be entered in the drawing. You just have to say that you, you're starting, blah, blah, blah. So we just know that you're staying on course. Um, if you don't Facebook, then you can just email customer service with um, your progress, and we'll put you in the drawing that way as well. Can you take a screenshot of your digital picture layout, including the folders and tagging? Um, I'm a, I don't know if that means you're going to have to, if you can clarify, Robin, for that. Does that mean you want a, a screenshot of the, of the, PD, of the presentation? I'm not sure. Re, uh, give me some more details, and I'll we'll get back we'll get back to you. I've been listening again while I sort paper, and it has been really helpful. Good job, Cindy. Good to know you're with us. Um, on your digital, oops, I went too far. On your digital pictures, if you pull it up and right click, go to property, it should tell you the date you created the picture in your computer. Um, uh, that's from Nell, and that's a good um, reminder. So when you right-click and go to Property, it'll tell you the date that you um, uploaded the picture to your computer. Um, it'll also tell you what, um, also in there, I'm not sure if it's in the exact same place, but it'll tell you where the picture is in your, you know, what folder it's in. So if you're not sure where it is, that'll tell you as well. Well, listening to you talk, I just made my photo organizer sheet. I have the dates listed on the left side and the months across the top, the abbreviations below, such as B for birthday, A for anniversary, F for Father's Day, W wedding, etc. I'm so excited. This will help a lot to get me organized. Um, you know, I, I can't stress enough how important just the process um, of the mental process of it is and the systematicness of it. Once you have that system set up, and you, you know how to use it, that's really the key for the whole thing is knowing. 
I mean, it's just like putting your supplies away. Once you know where those supplies go, it's easy to put them away. If you don't have to guess where those pictures are going to go, they're not going to end up in a pile at the end of the table because you know what box they belong in. So great. I'm glad you're already moving forward. What is the angle of the scrap rack base unit? It is not adjustable. It is, is it adjustable? No, it's not adjustable. It sits at a 45 degree angle. If you have a much steeper angle than a 45 degree angle, you may have your scrap rack sitting on its back. It's a very common setup error. Um, when you, it still works. It's just your pages are, kind of, are going to sag right across the table. But if you look at your scrap rack from the back, you should see the solid metal piece with the scrap rack website embossed on it. Um, if you, when you look at it from the back, you see the hinging mechanism. You, have, you need to pull your spinders off, tip your base unit over, and put your spinders back on. I missed the first three sessions. I heard you said we can go to the website, so I guess I'm requesting the first one only. My email is, um, Virginia, if you can just send that same request to the customer service email, that would be great. I don't actually, I can't actually cut and paste off this um, question list, so I, and I can't get back to it. So if you don't mind sending that to customer service, that would be great. Soap and water should make them stick again. Huh, good to know. I'm assuming that's in regard to our undo and sticker use. What size pages will work best with acrylic stamps? Um, you know, it just depends on the stamp size, Eileen. If you use the little tiny stamps, then this new Sweet 16 page is going to work best. The cataloging method really um, is important because it makes the best use of the most pockets. So I'd really encourage anybody that's struggling with stamp organization, we are going to talk about it. But if, like Eileen, you want to get ahead, go to the website and look at that um, article on stamp organization. Are you going to have the ribbon and fiber boards again to wrap our fibers ribbons? I would love more of those from Tracy. Absolutely. We know that the containers arrived in the port last night, so everything is turned on on the website and the ribbon and fiber uh, boards should be available on the um, on the page with the pages listed on it. Um, I'll go in and double check, but I'm sure they've all been turned on now, and hopefully we'll be shipping those out either by the end of this week or the first of next week. Um, how come you won't be at CKC Kansas City in October? My sister and I are so disappointed. I'm so sorry, um, Eileen. I wish I was going to be there. We only do 10 to 12 shows a year, so we have to kind of rotate through which shows we go to. So if I'm not coming to your city or we're not coming to your city, I apologize for that. I know some vendors do 30 shows a year, but I'm just too old to get on a plane. That would be 60 times a year, I guess. The scant 24 that we do now is, is enough. So, uh, Sue Marina says, first time listening, love it. Uh, can number one be put in two sections? Oh. That's a good idea, Sue. I will make a note of that and see if I can do that. I don't know why not, but I'll give it a shot. It'll be up there if I can get it figured out. I have a few boxes of very old family heritage photos. Do I sort them the same way? Some are way older than I am. Absolutely. You just want to get them into chronological order and then beyond chronological order, group them by event so that when you're ready to scrap them and get them out of those boxes, um, then they'll be ready to go. Where do you get Picasso? We already talked about that, Picasso.com. I took my old albums to SC Archivers, and they said if they have lasted this long to leave them alone. Many were put down with rubber cement from Evelyn. Um, so that's, uh, I, I don't know if SC Archivers means South Carolina Archivers, I'm, I'm guessing. Um, but yeah, there's no need to take apart old albums unless, you know, like like they're falling apart as the one gal mentioned. Um, you could add um, some maybe journaling to them or insert some pages kind of adding your story to the story that exists. That would be cool. I don't know how any scrapper lived without Undo. I have a great story about the time when Undo was unavailable within California for a while. I was like a junkie missing her fix. Yeah, Undo rocks. If you've not used it, you definitely should. I love undo, but it is smelly. Use in a well-ventilated area. I have old photos from my mom. They're curled and cracked. Any recommendations for these? What can I do to have them lay flat? You know, Tina, probably your best option for those is to just scan them at a really high resolution and have them reprinted. 
Um, I, I don't. I would actually talk to an archiving specialist if you want to actually flatten them out. I don't know why you couldn't just do it between archival sheets of paper with a weight on them, like a book. But I'm not an archivist. But I would definitely scan them, um, especially the ones that are you know cracked. Scan them, and you can have them then reprinted, and, and they'll be they'll look exactly the same. You can actually touch them up to remove the cracks then too, if you want to. But I think the cracks are probably pretty cool. From Janice, all my digital photos are on iPhoto. Oh, again, with the iPhoto question. So if you're a Mac user um, and you can post up to the Facebook group, that would be great. Wouldn't most memorabilia fit into the file folders? Yes, most memorabilia would fit into file folders. And when we talk about um, memorabilia, isn't that part of this webinar? Am I missing? Or this is just photos. Do we do memorabilia and journaling notes? Maybe we do that when we're getting ready to go to the crop. But absolutely, they'll fit into file folders. Um, photos have been a burden to scrap, but when, with your help, I look forward to the joy of scrapbooking it. Thank you. You've truly helped me. Well, Bridget, I'm so glad. It really makes my day when people, you know, get get that sense of they can they can do it. And you know, I I think in the first couple of webinars I talked about how I had almost given up scrapbooking because I was so overwhelmed with everything. Um, so I'm glad that it's working for you. How do you store your old film negatives? I use negative storage sheets from the photo uh, store. So if you have kids' camera or tall's camera or anything like that, um, you can actually just you buy them in packs of 25, and one sheet will hold an entire roll of negatives. And if you have the little um, proof sheet that, or they call it an index print that comes with it, I tape my index print right on to the, each one of those. Uh, negative holders so that I can actually see see what the negatives are. Excuse me. Um, is the discount code you gave out last week still good? It is still good, and it'll be good through the end of the series. Most of my photos are on disk, so it wouldn't be as easy to sort. Um, it wouldn't be as easy to sort, but you can put the disk right in chronologically where it belongs. Um, or into your, um, if you use a disk book, then they're going to be chronologically as well. And again, you can cross-reference that disk. So if there are things that are on your computer or that you have physically, you can just put a note, more pictures on this disk under this date and where the disk is located. So again, just going back to that systematically labeling things to direct your brain to where the other pieces of the puzzle are will be really helpful when you're ready to scrap. Uh, it's a Google product. Be prepared to walk away from your computer after downloading Picasso because it takes a long time to go out and find all your photos. I just did it at night before bed and walked away for the night. There we go. iPhoto is awesome. She can email me at Tammy, T-A-M-M-Y. I'll type it in down here in post for all. If you have iPhoto questions, you Tammy.S-C-H-M-I-T-T -T at Mac.com. Tammy Schmidt at Mac.com. Send to all. She is now our resident iPhoto expert, so feel free to email her with questions. Maybe she can put those answers that the most common questions together and post them up on Facebook. That would be great. And maybe we'll help from getting her bogged down. My computer shut down when you were talking about tagging photos, and I just got back online now. Will I be able to see the video again? I was out of town for the last two Tuesdays. How do I view the seminars? Yes, we will post this webinar just like we post the other ones, all in the same place. And if you just go to our homepage at thescraprack.com, click into the site and use the button in the upper left corner that says Summer Series, uh, Get Organized Challenge. Everything's there. Do you know when additional spinders will be in? Unfortunately, I do. They are scheduled for our, our late fall, early winter shipment. So we will not see those until November or December. I apologize for that. I taught a class where I showed people how to use uh, 50 spinders and only one base unit. And um, we sold six months worth of inventory inside of a month. So we're going to order plenty of spinders with that winter delivery. But unfortunately, we have to wait until they get here. Um, so would you start in the near past or the far past when sorting these 30 years of photos? 
I would just start with one container and it wouldn't really matter where you started. You could even start in the middle for that matter. If you know you have 30 years worth of photos, I would get, you know, like I said, six photo boxes and give each one a five-year increment and then no matter where you start, whatever photos you start with, you can just fill them into those photo storage boxes and then um, you can kind of hop around even in the project. So let's say you had one box of photos that had a variety of years. You sorted them into the right years. You don't necessarily have to sort all 30 years of photos into the boxes before you can start sort of sorting those smaller piles into event or date groups. I hope that makes sense. I'm happy to talk about that more if it doesn't. Um, let's see. When I look back at 30 years of photos, it was very easy to purge and throw away because I couldn't remember half of the events or people. I love my Creative Memories Memory Manager and have since the beginning. So I'm not sure what the Creative Memories Memory Manager is, um, but it sounds like it's a really great and workable um, product for Jean. And um, again, purging, I, I guess that, that P word just keeps popping up for us. Uh, what is the name of the PDF for number one webinar? You just have to type in PDF number one and we'll know what you're talking about. I want to make sure I don't have it already. Oh, I got it. Uh, it is uh, Get Ready to Get Organized is the name of it. Um, I've been able to help my mom and my best friend organize their supplies and photos but still haven't got mine all organized yet. I either find something else to do or don't have the time. I get distracted with looking at my old pics too easily. What do you suggest? I suggest um, limiting yourself to one small stack of photos at a time if you get distracted. So, you know, take a stack of photos, maybe four inches of photos, and just sort those four inches of photos. And that way you will get a chance to look at them and enjoy them, and then you'll get them sorted, and then you can take another four-inch stack of photos. And again, it's that system that matters, so even if you're working slowly through it, stay the course and stick with that system. But photos are distracting. It's one of the reasons it's really important that when you, you sit down to scrap or you go to a crop that you already have them sorted and organized ideally by layout so that you're going to actually get so much more done when you do it. But that's what, totally what I would suggest, Tracy, is to, that you just do a small number of them at a time and it's easier. Evelyn says, for 25 years I worked with color. I must m make folders into secondary colors. Laugh out loud. That is where my mind goes. Driving, driving me crazy to have a purple folder, Evelyn. You know, and you can break your purple down. I know some people have their colors, you know, they, actually, they literally use their color wheel to break down their colors. And so you'll find that people kind of macro-manage color or, or everything for that matter and then micromanage and really break it down. My suggestion is to get the major color groups together first and then when you have some spare time, go ahead and break down into the smaller color groups. But in the meantime, by having that larger color group done, you can actually use the things that you've done. I have started the process and have completed my papers by color and pattern. I've also completed my alpha number stickers by color. It sure felt good to have this complete. Way to go, Sony. During the Q&A, could you scroll through the webinar screenshots just as a refresher for the course? Um, I don't know how to do that. Uh, I, maybe I can set it up. I'll see if there's some way to set up my PowerPoint to just uh, scroll through every few seconds or whatever. I know you guys are only seeing that screen. My whole screen is filled up with words uh, for the Q&A. I know you guys don't see this though. So, Can you repeat again how we get the PDF files from on the website? You just have to go to the website and in the upper left hand corner, you know, you click in, you get to our homepage and then you click into the website and in the upper left hand corner there's a button that says Summer Series Get Organized Challenge. Just click on that and um, it'll take you to all the webinars and the PDFs are listed right above the webinar for download. Is there any way, oops, I went too far again. Um, Sorry, I scrolled too far here, so let me get caught up. Is there any way you can put the email address and the web name on the screen so you don't have to repeat it them in Q&A all the time? No, but you're right, Don. I am repeating it, so I will wait till the very end and then I will re and then I will repost. I'm just going to skip those questions as we go through. I just started and just received my scrap rack. My husband has watched on his own all your videos, so he understands what is going on. I'm so proud of his interest. 
That's the kind of man he is. I'm blessed. You are blessed, Denise. And big fat kudos to your husband for taking an interest and investing the time in something that you love so much. So you're a very lucky woman. I mean a screenshot from your personal computer, like of your Explorer window that shows your digital picture tagging. Um, I'll try. I am a little bit um, handicapped as a tech person, actually, but um, I have teenage children, so I'm sure that they can help me with that. But I'll definitely try and do one of my own, uh, what my own thing looks like, and get it posted so that you know. I can definitely um, post the folder list, I mean, screenshot the folder list, which would give you a good idea as well. Is there only one PDF for webinar number two? Somehow I have two that were sent to me with the same title. Uh, no, there's only one. I don't know how you got two. What? How old? I don't believe it. You look in your early 30s. I wish I was in my early 30s. No, I don't. I'm really happy. I just celebrated my 46th birthday, actually. My children are 13 and and I am 15. My 15, my Older son just turned 15 two days ago, the 31st of, of December. And Glenda says, rubber cement is the worst thing. It will eat the photos. So if you have photos stuck down with rubber cement, you may want to check with an archivist or, or, the, or Google you and find out what would be best for that. Will you be coming to CKC in Mesa, Arizona in 2012? I missed you this year. Um, uh, I think I think uh, Arizona is on our schedule for 2012. We don't actually get our schedules until October, or the shows don't actually post their schedules until October for us to sign up. So, um, so, but I think that we will be in Arizona this next year. We haven't been there in like three years. Um, best thing for anything put down with rubber cement is to scan those album pages. So scan them at a high resolution, and then you can uh, reprint them. Archival paper and a press from your local library will flatten out those crunched and curled pictures from Diane. Good tip. Undo is great, but you can also try a hair dryer on the very lowest settings and then using wax dental floss, which will which you slide behind the photo and gently loosen the photo from the page. Ooh, another great tip. Can you repeat the discount code at the end? Yes, I will post it at the end. I I think. I'm not sure what it is, but I, I will. Uh, Tiffany, as a scrapbook retailer, do you have a wholesale option at the scrap rack for me? And can you post a discount code from last week's webinar? I had a doctor appointment I couldn't reschedule, so I missed last week. Yes, I'll try and post it. And yes, you can send an email to customer service at the scrap rack, and we can get you set up for the wholesale program. Uh, be careful with very old photo. You can easily crack the emulsion on the surface. It's best to talk to a professional on straightening them. Scanning is one option. There are books available on handling antique photos. We can talk on Facebook if you like. And that's from Robin Jones in California. So post up for Robin or post up your questions and you'll get some great answers. The email for Tammy at iPhoto did not come through for me. It's Tammy. I hope I can do this. Tammy. I think it was T-A-M-M. I don't remember. I'll look back. Let's see. Maybe I, maybe I didn't send to all. Uh, I don't know where it is now. We'll, we'll, we'll get her posted up on Facebook, or you can email me and ask for that, and we'll, we'll get it for you. Memory Managers, Creative Memories Digital Photo Organizer from Jean. I put this quote on my purge box. Perfection is achieved now. Perfection is achieved now when there is nothing more to add, but when there is nothing left. Oh, not. Perfection is achieved not when there is nothing more to add, but when there is nothing left to take away. I've seen that. I think I posted that too, Sarah. I think when you I saw that on your thing, I reposted that. I thought that was great. I use the organizer in Photoshop Elements to organize all my bazillion digi photos, and it's amazing. Um, oh, here we've got, uh, let's see. I also have digi scrapbooking supplies sorted and tagged with PSC. So if I want to pink piece of paper with dots on it, I can search for that result. Fabulous results, but it takes work to get it all tagged like that. But once it's done, it's amazing. So again, a great system that really works. So Tammy, I'm getting her email here from others. Tammy.schmidt at Mac.com. Send to all. Resend it to all of you now. Just wanted to say thank you. Um, 
for the information and to tell all the ladies that their input on Facebook page is totally awesome. You guys, I have to, that's the end of the question list today is, um, from Jesse Sherman. But I really just, you know, all of you who take your time to answer questions on Facebook and post on Facebook and help other people and encourage other people, um, you, you really are a wonderful group of, of gals. And I'm so glad that you're, um, that you're all part of this event. So, um, so if you, Tammy's email was put on Facebook. Oh, good. Somebody already posted to Facebook. We're so fast with that. You guys rock. Um, so again, Glenda says, I gave up trying to remove heritage photos from album pages. It's dangerous because the photos are so fragile. Most of us have a scanner available. Um, highly suggest scanning. So again, with um, that scanning is key. So anyway, thank you all, ladies, for joining us today. I'm looking forward to your posts, and I will get my work done here with the recorded webinar and get that posted up and post up the PDFs for you all. Um, if you have more questions, post them on Facebook or email me. And um, have a wonderful day, and I will see you next week.